thanks to those that could make it and um, thanks to everyone else that's uh, that's watching this recording. Um, we're going to spend the next sort of 20 to 30 minutes just outlining um, our plans for a fundraising challenge that's very unique. It's never been attempted before and, and hopefully will get us uh, over that final hurdle uh, towards the, com the completion of our, our clubhouse development. So um, I'm aware that uh, most of the people on this call and watching will be familiar with the clubhouse and familiar with the with the club in general, but uh, hopefully we've friends uh, outside of the club and other other locations around the country and other clubs that are that are watching this. And, and just to give a bit of a background to the club, we're, we're 40 years old, uh, give or take a year, we're 40 years old now. The club was uh, originally started as a roof rack club for the local community around Temple Mills and Salbridge, a lot of local families, many of whom are kind of still involved in some way, shape or form. Um, and for the better part of 12 years, the club was um, a roof rack club or a nomadic club in that there were, uh, there were uh, various uh, phases along that first 12 year period where the club existed in, um, in Temple Mills, uh, in our clock, uh, across the canal from where we currently reside. And eventually in 1994, we, uh, the club found its present home um, on the South Bank at Elmere Bridge. Um, so in the intervening 20 years from 1994, uh, there was a huge amount of work done by many of the people on the call here and those uh, that are still involved in the club uh, to get the club to, to what we see um, here, where we had four, uh, four, we started out with you know one one forty foot container and to get it to four forty foot containers with electricity, running water, and a, a fully operational gym, toilets, um, at one point showers. Every like it really was an incredible achievement for for um, for the resources that they had available at the time. And during that whole period, uh, going back to when I first got involved in the club in the in the middle of the nineties. There'd always been a push for a permanent clubhouse and it's been a slow, steady challenge ever since to get uh, licensing agreements in place with UCD, to get planning permission, to get uh, funds raised over the years. There's been countless race nights, countless quizzes um, and sponsored paddles that we'll talk about to get us to a point where um, last year we were able to finally um, begin uh, construction on the clubhouse. Um, so we're we're midway through construction now. The roof is expected. We're, the the structure is expected to be roofed in the next couple of weeks. Um, and I guess the reason that we're we're undertaking this final fundraising event is because, amongst all the other hurdles that we've had to overcome over the years, um, COVID threw a final uh, spanner in the works and and significantly delayed the, the start of our uh, construction. Uh, to the point where we very nearly ran out, uh, hit a deadline on, on our planning permission, but the, the, the number of years that we'd had planning permission were, were, uh, were quickly dwindling away. Um, and as everybody's kind of aware, that's, that's added significant, that, that two years has added significant cost to all construction. Um, to the point that um, despite us having been awarded uh, sports capital grants to further the development of the project, um, there's still a significant shortfall. Um, so it, did this sort of 18 grand target has come about on the basis that that's what we're going to need to to finish the interior work and to um, to be able to have a functioning gym to the standard that we want uh, and boathouse a gym and a boathouse in, in, uh, inside to the level that we would be happy and proud of. Um, so that's really where the challenge comes from. Um, so. The, the sponsor paddle uh, really came about on the, uh, based on previous events that we've ran in 2008. We, we did the first sponsor paddle, um, at which we headed uh, west from uh, Grand Canal Docks out to Shannon Harbour. Um, and uh, eight years later, we did the return leg of that second sponsor paddle, where we started in Shannon Harbour and returned to uh, Grand Canal Docks and both of those events were a huge success not only in terms of fundraising but also in creating great memories for the club 
um, and uh, just a really, really great event for the whole club to get behind and to work towards. So when we thought about um, the sort of shortfall that we need to overcome and the, the history of the club in terms of sponsored paddles, it made sense to try and organize something. So um, I came up with the idea, well, we've gone west on the Grand Canal and we've gone east on the Grand Canal. Why don't we try and do the whole loop on the Royal and the Grand Canal? Um, so we've we've a lot of uh, paddlers over the years have gone over to Nottingham and further afield and raced in crew boats. I thought, well, we have a Club K4 that uh, was purchased back uh, in the early 2000s from uh, the Polish junior, junior national team or a German club at the time that um, was brought back to uh, to our club. It's been in the club for over you know 20 years nearly at this stage. Um, and we thought, what if what if everybody in the club could get that boat around and won't go around the whole um, the whole Grand and Royal Canal? Um, it would be a hell of an achievement. Uh, so the the challenge is that we we paddle our Club K4, we take it out of the 40 foot container that's still up there, and on uh, April 30th we take it out at dawn, we put it on the Grand Canal, we head east into into Dublin. Uh, onto the Royal Canal in Dublin, and then we complete the green and silver line. Um, a total of 355 kilometers over the Maybank holiday weekend. It includes 91 portages. And uh, broadly speaking, we've broken it into four sections. Um, the first section, and um, we'll go through each of these sections um, in uh, piece by piece and try and talk about what's needed. Um, so the first section, which we call 12 to 12, is from the 12th lock on the Grand Canal into Grand Canal Harbour, across to Spencer Dock and back out to the 12th lock just near Leakslip um, on the Royal Canal. Um, it's by far the most logistically and technically challenging stretch uh, to do. Thankfully, we're doing it as the first leg. Um, and we plan on leaving um, at 6 a.m. on the 30th of April. Um, and paddling into town, back out, and be finishing sometime around half 11, uh, 12 noon um, on the 30th. Um, what we're planning on doing for this, so that there are certain logistical and um, sort of operational considerations for each of these sections. Um, and the big one with, the, with this section, 12 to 12, is the number of portages and the location of those portages. We're, we're traveling into the city center and back out. It's an incredibly memorable experience for anybody that's done it. It's rare that we get an opportunity to paddle all the way in along some lovely stretches into the Grand Canal. For most of us, it'll be the first time uh, paddling on the Royal Canal. Um, so it is, a, it is an incredible uh, once in a lifetime opportunity to do uh, that stretch as a group. Um, but it does require additional uh, sort of support. So we're, we're going to need extra uh, senior um, volunteers on bikes to accompany the crew, the, the K4, the whole way in and the whole way back out. And our plan is to put together uh, combination crews, crews of, of juniors and seniors. There will always be two experienced seniors in the boat at all times. And we'll have other seniors uh, accompanying on bike and uh, with the support crews in support vehicles along that stretch. So um, that's the first stretch. And hopefully that'll be accomplished with a mixture of um, our, our juniors in the club and uh, experienced seniors and other juniors if they want to get involved. Um, the Royal Canal stretch then is uh, the, the longest stretch on the whole, uh, the, the longest section on the whole challenge. It's 109 kilometers in, in length. There's 33 portages. It starts in Leakslip um, at around 11.30 and it's going to finish, uh, we reckon, around 10 o'clock on Saturday evening on April 30th. Um, we're hoping to accomplish this with three uh, senior K4s. Uh, we're putting out our most, we're putting out our most, uh, not experienced, I'd say our fittest four paddlers uh, would be the best way to put it. Our fittest uh, four senior and under 23 paddlers and they're gonna try and break the back of this. They're gonna try and get the majority of this done and then we need a couple other crews to, to form up to try and finish it out, to do a two hour uh, block from Leachip to past Enfield and another two hour block out towards Kinnegan, Bullingar. And then our, our top lads in the club will, will see the rest of it out to, to Kundara. Um, 
at all times when you see these crews where our plan is that this is done in shift work that um that uh, we have we've designated crews and the next week we'll have a full schedule with designated crews and designated support crews um and at that stage the support crews and the paddling crews um can start to work on their sections where are the important bridges and locks and we'll work through that over the next week or two so that everybody knows their role and everyone knows their responsibility for the stretches that they've got to get through um so on april 30th there's an overnight stop a very short overnight stop we're, we're factoring in that things might not go according to plan on the first two sections and we might have a very tired and uh, very very fatigued uh crew arriving in uh, in the in the wee hours of the morning on april 30th so we've booked accommodation at uh the shannon bar in Thurman barry uh we've six beds booked um, which we're, we're hoping will allow for the, the Lock Rig uh, K4 crew to get a good night's sleep. And for um, the crew that arrives into Tarman and Barry, that if there's anybody that really needs a good night's sleep that can't, uh, that wants to sleep over there, with the option of trying to get a few more beds. So we'll see, we might, we might book a few more um, and make a night of it down in, in Tarman and Barry. Um, so that, that'll, get us, that'll get us over half the distance done. Um, and hopefully a fresh and experienced crew of seniors is going to take the uh, take the leads on um, on the morning of May 1st, Sunday, May 1st at six o'clock in the morning, bright and early to, to start onto the Shannon. Um, this is the riskiest stretch uh, for a lot of reasons. It's very weather dependent and we will be making a weather call on the entire events, probably on the Wednesday before the event runs. Um, uh, so we're, we're hoping that the, that two senior K4s, our, our most experienced group of, of seniors, will, will take the, the helm across uh, Loch Ree. We have Westmead Civil Defence uh, are, are, are providing uh, support in, in way of a, a safety boat across Loch Ree. Um, so we're, we're liaising with them to, to plan out when we meet them at Lanesborough and um, and the route that we want to take. So we have a plan A and a plan B route that's, that we're forming around whether there's strong westerly or easterly winds. Um, but if there's anything force four or greater on the cards coming in off the Atlantic in the lead up to the event, we, we, it, that's the only thing right now that we think might, might postpone the event if there was a storm warning coming in uh, off the Atlantic. But um, knock on wood, six o'clock on, on Sunday, uh, May 1st, our, our most experienced senior crew will, will head out onto Loch Ree. Um, they'll arrive um, about three hours later in, um, in Athlone, um, swap over if necessary, and the, a second senior crew will finish out the stretch down as far as Shannon Harbour. Um, section four then is the is the section where we as a club are most familiar with. We've done it plenty of times um, and we know the we know the challenges. Um, it's a 99 kilometer distance from Shannon Harbour back to our club. Um, there's 24 portages. Um, we reckon it can be done in 10 hours. Um, so we expect that this stretch, this is the finishing stretch. So we're suggesting that this is another stretch where we can, we can schedule junior and senior crews of all ages and abilities to get in the boat and, and put a couple hours in and, and let's see the journey out to, to completion. Um, we'll need, we'll need a, a support as per every stretch on the, on the route and we'll talk about support crews now in a little bit. Um, so we expect to arrive into uh, our clock GA club sometime depending on if all is going according to plan. Um, we don't know, they're, they're, we're building in contingency that this Arrival event may happen on, on the bank holiday Monday, but we're hoping if all things go according to plan that we can have a nice welcoming party for um, for the K4 uh, at our clock GA club on the on uh, Sunday evening of a bank holiday weekend in the lounge there, and that might see it out. Um, so at that event, hopefully we can uh, we can make a provision provisional announcement on the on the funds that have been raised. There'll be obviously a few little bits. Uh, still to come in, but we expect most of the funds will be raised at that stage. Uh, we might have a prize for the most funds raised, maybe a bit of a raffle, and we, we might try and organize a bit of music as well, just to make, make an event of it. 
So that's the challenge that we got to get over. That's the, in my opinion, that's the easier of the two challenges. The, the bigger challenge is fundraising. Um, we've got five weeks to, to try and break the back of this, um, this 18 grand target that we've set ourselves. Um, and that's going to take a serious, uh, a serious organization and serious commitment from everybody that signs up to, to, to help out with this, to participate in it and to, to support the event. Um, so we have sponsorship cards that are, are ready to go hot, hot off the press. And one of the first things that we need everybody to do following from, on from this meeting or uh, when you watch this recording is to sign up uh, for the event online. We have a, a sign up form uh, that Fergus put together for participants and for support group, because those are the two big groups that we need. Um, as soon as you sign up and you provide your address, we'll get a, we'll get a sponsor card out to you and, um, and, and, they can, and you can get started into uh, raising, uh, raising funds. Now, this is a big challenge. And in previous, the first, the first sponsor paddle went, re, in terms of fundraising was a lot easier because um, D d these online sort of GoFundMe's and stuff didn't really exist, so it was done old school. We raised a lot more money the first time around than we did the second time around, and it was mostly because we approached it very old school, door to door, approaching local businesses, approaching any contacts that might be able to support us either logistically or through a donation that could, that formed part of a, a program book at the end of it. Um, the, the 2016 one was, uh, we raised a significant amount. I think we raised about six or seven grand, but it, it, I think the big part of the reason we didn't raise more was a lot of it just kind of trickled in from GoFundMe and there, there wasn't that, uh, that same kind of energy and drive around the sponsor cards because so much of it was being done online. Um, so we're taking a leaf out of um, Manute Galway cycle um, in terms of trying to make commitments and deadlines when it comes to uh, to, to fundraise and right so we're we're, we're proposing a, a target for seniors of 250 euros raised and for juniors of 150 um it, it, and and that's really to to try and uh, it, we're, we're hoping the vast majority of people reach or exceed that target by the 28th of april um and uh, and that anybody that fails to meet it gets very 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 close to meeting that target that's the only way that we're going to get this done um, we, we need 30 paddlers to, to front up um, and participate in this and we need them all to, uh, to raise, a, you know, 150 to 200 euro, 250 euros for us to meet our target. Um, it's, it seems like a lot and it seems like a big challenge and it is with the new Galway cycle, but you'd be surprised how, um, how much of that can get broken quite quickly if you just get a list of your closest work colleagues, friends, family. And, and really try to break it down. That this is this is the final hurdle for us to, to get over the line when it comes to fundraising, and hopefully um, we can we can meet that. Um, so we're proposing three ways to to collect money. All of them require you to fill out the sponsor cards. Okay. Um, the first is the old school approach: just take cash on the door, take cash from your friends and family, um, mark the cash on the card for the the donor's name, the donor's phone number and the, uh, the amount in cash that was donated. Um, and then on the 28th at the, uh, at the event briefing, uh, you can submit your, your card and uh, your cash. Um, the second option is with Revolut or bank transfers, if, uh, if that's how you, you operate nowadays, um, then that's fine. You take responsibility, get, get uh, Revolut transfers over. Again, mark it on the card, the donor's name, the phone number, and the amount that was uh, transferred in uh, in cash, i.e. Revolut. You take the cash out and bring it to the um, to the uh, event briefing on the 28th. And then the option C is to that the um, that the donor uh, 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 submits direct via the the GoFundMe page. So we have QR codes. We're going to print off a load and load and load of QR codes with a link to our GoFundMe. So if people are uh, knocking on doors or they're uh, asking their friends or family and they say, look, I've no cash on me, uh, do you have a go for me? Hand, hand them a, um, a QR code and take down the amount that they're going to uh, uh, um, submit on go for me. Then it's the responsibility of the donor to uh, submit their name and the, and the 
Paddler's initials in brackets. We need to be able to link this back. So if, for example, Joe Bloggs is going to donate me 20 euros, I'm going to write down Joe Bloggs in the card, and Joe's then going to donate on the GoFundMe and put my initials in brackets. And the reason that we're doing that is to try and keep some chain of responsibility around donations. It's all too often that someone says, yeah, I'll donate that and go for me and nothing gets done. The cards are a great way. It's an old school way of saying somebody wrote down, they're going to donate this money. And the person to come back around knocking on the doors and say, look, a couple of weeks ago, you said you donate this. Um, can, we, can we get that across the line? Um, so those are the three ways that we're uh, suggesting that we get um, our individual targets met in terms of fundraising and our overall target of getting this 18 grand and um, put to bed so we can we can finish out our project and get it uh, through to um to an to an opening of the new clubhouse so what do we need um we need participants we need support crew and we need uh, people to help with organizing um so we've we've had a number of meetings there's been a small group of uh, of people in the club um, and people that are helping out that, that have met to work out the logistical challenges and that that was necessary in order for us to do this we didn't want to do this presentation and announce the whole thing if it just wasn't uh, if it wasn't logistically feasible the route is is navigable there are some challenges along the route but it is navigable and i have had informal commitment from about 24 paddlers that they will help out with this. So I think there's enough people that have said to me, Neil, yeah, I'll get in a boat on two days and I'll, I'll, we'll get this done. What we need is those participants to sign up now officially and uh, to register for the event. We need, we think we need 30 to get this done based on the way we want to do it, to get it done safely and to get it done with the, uh, in the most enjoyable way, we need about 30 paddlers broken into about six or seven crews with a reserve paddler always ready to go with the support crew just in case somebody gets an injury and um, that we have somebody to, um, to, to switch out if necessary. So we need 30 paddlers. This is something that all ages and abilities, if you can paddle up the club and you're paddling in a stable K1 or you've a year's GP experience under your belt, we'll find a K4 crew that will work. We'll get experienced paddlers and we'll get you in the boat, even if it's only for an hour. Um, all ages and abilities um, and you decide how much you want to paddle or, or can paddle um, so we've a lot of commitment from the club we also have a lot of commitment from outside the club and this is something that I, I um, we, we're reaching out we, we don't think that we can get as a club that we can get this done ourselves um, and we, we'd like it'd be great if um, other paddlers out there or other crews from other clubs want to put a K4 together and enjoy a, a two or three hour stretch of, of paddling in a K4. We'll provide the boat. If you guys can get out and paddle and raise uh, some money for us, then we'd really appreciate that. So that's an open call to any paddlers to um, come and join us on the, on the May Bank holiday weekend and, and, and help us get across the line for our clubhouse. We also need support crew. We're going to need a minimum of 12 support crew, six drivers, and we're going to need um, uh, quite a few first aid certified so that we have our shifts so there's somebody on every shift that's that has our first aid kit and that's in direct contact with the crew at all times uh, on VHF. Um, in addition to that we, we've a lot of organizing to do between now and, and the event and um, we've got a we've got a formal list of all the local businesses all the contacts that we have in the locality and we've got to start hitting them up for um, for sponsorship, either uh, sponsorship towards advertisements in our event program or sponsorship in terms of, um, you know, food, drink, all the other uh, uh, logistical elements that are going to get this completed. Um, we, we need social media. So we have uh, we've Facebook, we have Instagram, Twitter. Um, most of the people that are currently involved in the, in the organizing of this are not uh, social media users, heavy social media users. So if you're out there and you want to help us out, um, uh, that that's something that we need. Um, we're producing an event program for this, so we need people to help with the uh, with a few old stories of the club that could be written up into a page or two, um, some bits on the the competitions that we've attended over the years, all of that. The history of, of it's an opportunity for us to put a lot of our 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 knowledge and history of the club and the and the and and um, and, and the sport into a, a commemorative program. Um, and that's, that's a, another avenue for us uh, when we're approaching the local businesses that we've got social media, there's gonna be regular social media updates on the training, 
on the fundraising over the coming five weeks. Um, and any of those local businesses, we're happy to give them a plug and happy to give them a shout out um, on, on that uh, and the, uh, that they would go into the event program that would go out to all of the clubs and communities that have helped us with this event. Um, and then there's a lot of planning and logistics. So look, there's something for everybody to, to get involved in, in, in this. Um, so just to finish up, what, do, what does everybody need to do next? First thing is you need to sign up. So we, uh, Fergal has, has launched our, uh, our participant and support crew forms. We need everybody to officially register for this. Um, so we'll, we'll publish these on, uh, on Facebook, uh, Instagram. We'll send them around WhatsApp so that everybody can get registered as soon as possible. We need to have a, a schedule ready to go in the next week. Uh, and then those crews can get to work. Um, so we need, so, so that's the first thing. The second thing, as soon as, as, soon as we get your registration, we'll start uh, getting sponsorship cards out to the addresses and to the people that have registered. Um, and between now and uh, the May Bank holiday weekend, we've got to get fundraising and we've got to get training. If you're assigned a crew, we need those crews to sit in the boat at least once for an hour. Uh, everybody's got to get into the boat that they're, that they're going to be paddling in and, and get it moving around. There are some uh, experienced paddlers out there that can't do that. We understand that. That's fine. Um, but for uh, as many of these crews as is absolutely logistically possible, we want to try and get everybody out training in the boat. The boat is fixed. It's up the club. Um, and we expect it to be out on the water every training session, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, from now until uh, the May Bank holiday weekend. So once you've registered and you've got your sponsor card and you're, and you're out training, and the next thing is to mark in the 28th of April in your calendar. That will be the, that's D-Day in terms of our deadlines for, for preparation, for fundraising. Um, and, and that'll be D-Day in terms of uh, a green light that, the, that we have a weather window and that we can push ahead with this. Um, so, so that's what we need to do. Um, it's a, there's, there's two huge challenges here. To, and the, to, to, there's tr as, far, as far as I can see, there's three objectives. The, one is to, is to hit our 18 grand mark. The other is to complete the bloody challenge because it is a serious challenge and there's a lot that could go wrong with it. And the third, which is the easiest, is that we, we create really, really enjoyable memories for the club. Another great event for, for our club and for all, all the friends of our club from all over the country that have always been friends and have always supported us. And um, this is a chance to really get out. You know, if you've got three or four friends or family out there and you want to hop in a K4, Brilliant. We thank the Watkins family, the Cooper family that have already said they're going to hop in a boat and do a bit of paddling. Um, and we expect to see lots of other paddlers signing up. So uh, if, if we can get that done, I think objective three, having a really enjoyable weekend, that's going to be the easy part. Um, so that's it from me. Um, I had one other thing on COVID just for support crew, just so you're aware, um, you know, we're in a kind of a, a bit of a state of flux with regards to COVID in, in Ireland at the moment. Um, so for support crew, just if you're signing up to be a, a supporter to help out on the on the logistics in terms of traveling along with the with the crew, making sure that they're getting through the portages, traffic management, that sort of stuff, just be aware it's, that there will be a requirement that everybody has a negative antigen test on the 28th. So we need everybody to be COVID free. Um, if we have a green light on the event and we've, uh, we've all our paddlers COVID free, and our support crew COVID free, um, then that's a big hurdle in terms of running a safe event. And then the other element of it from a safety perspective with COVID is just that the support crew will be um, wearing masks uh, in, when they're traveling and, and the paddlers that are being uh, ferried in and out, we will need um, masks for that. So that's that's really it. I'll leave that, that slide up there.